Continuing our discussion on the Bible, as Jesus left the temple for the last time in Matthew chapter 24, he conducts what is known as the Olivet Discourse. And I'm going to read it for you in verse 3 of Matthew chapter 24. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, first words out of his mouth, Take heed, let no one deceive you. See, Jesus warns his followers to be on guard against deception and those who will peddle deception. We see that over and over. Well, with today's technology, which has benefits, such as allowing you to watch or listen to Washington Watch on a device you carry in your pocket, it also allows the false prophets to amplify their message with what today we might call conspiracy theories or fake news. Of course, it is not just the new technology that is being used. The legacy media is a part of this problem. There is a reason, though, that these conspiracy theories can flourish. And there's a reason that people have lost their trust in their government. But what can be done to counter the demise of truth? Joining me now in studio to discuss this, David Clausen, director of the Center for Biblical Worldview here at the Family Research Council. David, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Tony. Great to be with you. So uh, I was reading this article last week, and it really jumped out at me. It was an AP article, and it, it, here's the title, Grave Peril of Digital Conspiracy Theories, What Happens When No One Believes Anything Anymore? <laughs> A very profound question, but I don't think, oh, well, reading the article, I know this to be the case, they don't get to the real problem and the source or the solution. No, they don't, Tony. And it, it was a fascinating uh, perspective in this article, thinking about fake news and conspiracy theories. And I think one of the premises is that, you know, conspiracy theories are, are more pernicious and more widespread than they've ever been before. And that's not exactly true. You know, if we've had conspiracy theories in this country for a long time, people doubting the moon landing, questions about JFK shooting. You know, conspiracy theories have right. been around for a long time. But they've also been around really since the beginning of time. Uh, going back to Genesis 3, I think the first conspiracy theory was what Satan introduced when he talked to Eve in the garden. Has God really said? That's the first conspiracy theory ever introduced into world history. This challenging of the truth, the challenging of what God had said, sowing doubt, uh, sowing confusion. And really, ever since then, we've lived in a, some sort of a post-truth world, which is it admittedly has gotten worse in recent decades. Well, and I think, as I, as I quoted from Matthew chapter 24, J Jesus warned in his conversation with his followers that this was going to be the case. And so yep. repeatedly he says, don't be deceived. Uh, we see Paul saying the same thing. So we should take that as an indication that these latter days are going to be filled with deception. I just found it interesting that even the AP is acknowledging that there is a deception. But I want to go back to what you said from Genesis chapter 3. Deception comes when we depart from truth. Yes. And so how do we combat deception? You know, one of the antidotes is we just need to go back to truth. Um, and frankly, Tony, that's not something that we see at all in our culture. It's increasingly something that is uh, lacking in our churches. Uh, one thing uh, I've done some speaking recently in the last couple of weeks, and one thing I've had to address is, you know, even in our churches, we're not immune from these things. Uh, FRC, we did a, a poll, George Barna and I did some research last uh, semester, last fall, uh, that showed actually that 48% of regular churchgoers uh, say that they don't believe in absolute moral truth. The, the idea that there is something that is objectively true, that's true for all people at all time. 48% reject that, which that's a basic tenet of a biblical worldview, Tony. Uh, for another 11% said they don't know. And so we need to start there uh, and right. our church is confused. So what's the antidote? What's the solution? Well, it's humility. First of all, acknowledging that this is an issue, acknowledging that this is a problem, and then we need to have discernment. You know, the great commandment, what did God say? Or did Jesus say? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and your mind. We need to be discerning. Yeah, well, just as Eve was confronted by Satan, did God really say, well, wait a minute, let me, let me check. Let me go back to the source. Yeah. She should have stopped at that moment. Adam, what did God say? 
you go back to the source. That's how you counter the deception. And so as we reject truth, we have nothing to measure a lie by. And I, I'm going to quote from this article, King, because I found it interesting. And, 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 and this is just quoted from it. And even when they failed to convince people, the conspiracy theories embraced by these groups contribute to mounting distrust of authorities, democratic institutions, causing people to reject reliable sources of information while encouraging division and suspicion. So this whole article is focused on uh, you know, bloggers and, and others on using the Internet. But they're saying, well, this affects legitimate media. This affects government. This affects institutions of democracy. Well, the reason they're susceptible, because they were the first ones that rejected truth and therefore set the stage for these conspiracy theories to prosper as they are. For a long time, Tony, the, the media and uh, journalists uh, of all stripes, really, have had such a casual relationship with the truth. And when you have a casual relationship with the truth, or worse, Tony, even suppress legitimate news. Well, uh, let me tell you, if, if you have a government that cannot follow the science and determine whether a male is a male and a female <laughs> is a female, it's laughable to right. suggest that I should trust you to be a guardian of the truth. Oh, when you have a breakdown in authority like we're seeing today, Tony, especially in media, especially for those on TV, uh, you, you, you sow the seeds on fertile ground for these conspiracy theories to thrive. And, and we live in an age, Tony, where this breakdown in authority has happened across society. Actually, uh, Gallup, uh, did a, a survey last um, last year that showed American confidence in our institutions. And 11 out of the 16 institutions that they've been doing this poll for 40 years, 11 of the 16 have the lowest level of confidence that they've had in 40 years, from the media to newspaper to the government to Congress. We, we live in a time when people simply don't trust institutions. Right. They don't trust authority figures. And I'm going to say something, nor should they. Right. Uh, given where we are. So, w w what do we do? Number one, we should not be surprised. Yes. Okay? That's why I started with Matthew chapter 24. Jesus warned us over and over in his dialogue with his followers for application in these times that this was going to occur. So, we should, we should not be surprised. Right. Number two, we should put our confidence in that which does not change. Yes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word of God does not change. If we want to expose and understand what is a conspiracy, and they're out there, I tell people all the time, be careful what you read on the, online, be careful about just forwarding something on, be discerning. David, how do we have discernment in these days? I think what you just said, Tony, we need to stand on God's Word. We, we need to go back to the Bible, which is our ultimate source of truth. Jesus in Matthew 10, 16, right when He sent His disciples out into a, a, a world that He knew was going to challenge them and their teaching, He said that, you need to, that He told, told His disciples to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. And so how do we combat misinformation and conspiracy theories? I think the first step that I would take when I see something on the social media or the news is just take a Pause. Don't believe anything you see just because you see it in and, print. And, and don't, don't, I mean, resist this temptation to forward it on or to <laughs> post it uh, or embrace it. And I mean, you don't have to be the first one to pass it on. Pray over it. Dis have discernment. Because here's what happens when you do that, and most of these are exposed within yes. time. If you're associated with that, you lose credibility among your friends. Absolutely. And there's the impulse that we, we like to know everything at once. Yeah. You know, in the social media age, we're used to getting our news uh, instantaneously. And, and so I think we need to slow down. Uh, we need to pray. And, and I think it's always good to corroborate. If you see right. something on social media, don't just assume it's right. true. Don't forward the email to a friend. Don't forward the post. But corroborate it. Right. Go to some valid Tr news organizations. Try to get as close to the source as you can. And that's one of the reasons here on Washington Watch. And, and I'm going to tell you, folks, I do my very best to make sure that everything we say here is validated and it's true. And if we do get something wrong, I'm going to take ownership of that, and I'm going to correct it when we find out. But that's why we bring you the actual newsmakers. We go right to the source. 
Uh, we're not, you know, reporting on what someone else said. We're actually here in the arena talking about these things. So you, 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 the closer you can get to the source in these days, I think, is very important. I, I would say the rule of thumb, anything you see that is detached from a specific, reliable news or organizational site like Washington Stand, or and there's many others, don't trust into if it's not connected to a site that it right. can be verified. No, I, I agree with that, and that's why I'm so happy that we will, about a year and a half ago launched the Washington Stand uh, because we have a that's whole team reason. of reporters, Tony, right. uh, that report the news, and we know also they're coming at from a biblical worldview. Uh, I write uh, for the Stand as well, just trying to connect it to scripture, trying to connect it to facts, objective truth, uh, things that are reportable, things that can be verified. Uh, that's why it's so important. And again, we, we see that in scripture as well. Uh, we see this pursuit of the truth. Uh, and I think that's so important in an age, Tony, when someone can fire something off on social media and it can make it around the world uh, it'd be shared millions of times before there's even a chance to do a fact check. Yeah, and you know when you look at what Jesus warned would be the the environment in the end times. Yes. You know, he said that there would be wars, rumors of wars, there would be earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence. So when you hear those things happen, you know the scripture says, yeah, those yep. things are going to happen. Uh, acts of terrorism, he talks about that. Violence toward believers, he talks about that. Mm -hmm. uh, division in families, he talks about that. So we know those things are happening, and so that's in line with scripture, so we can say, well, all right, this lines up with what Jesus said was going to be happening, let's go to the next step and validate and verify the source, then I think we are in a position, this is what is, I think, so significant, David, about Christians in America. Uh, right there in that seat you're sitting in today, yesterday, I had a pastor from Nigeria mm. uh, who in his community, over 200 people were killed uh, on Christmas Eve. Um, we have the ability here in the United States to use the freedoms that we still have to advocate for others. Yes. We have the ability to expose these things that are occurring in the end times that Jesus warned about. He said they were coming, I think, to prepare us so that we could stand against the evil. Remember, Paul talks about the lawlessness that's going to break out and it's going to increase but the church is to be a restrainer of that. So we have to act on legitimate information we have so that we can be the salt and light that allows the gospel to go forth. Absolutely, Tony. You already quoted Matthew's gospel a couple of times, even in this segment, Sermon on the Mount, most famous sermon ever given. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Jesus tells us, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And what does he so, say? Would that be like a wool suit? I don't know. <laughs> In today's terms. Well, what he tells us, he says, you will recognize them by their fruit. And so that's yeah. that's a, a litmus test, Tony. We can look at the people reporting the news. Let's recognize them by their fruit. And I think that's a good thing for us to do. Well, again, when you have people denying the revealed truth that yep. is so fundamental, male and female, um, the institution of marriage, all of these things that history has revealed, when you deny that, I mean, talk about deniers. <laughs> that, that would say these people are not worthy to be trusted or followed. Yeah, and that's why we need discernment, I think, today more than we have ever needed it. Uh, because again, I was watching CNN last night, and it, you know, in the back of my mind, I just don't feel like I can trust even the premise of some of their arguments when the previous segment, you know, they're using preferred pronouns right. and uh, even the segment you had earlier or just, you know, lionizing people that are on board with the LGBT revolution. So prayer, discernment, corroborating, objectivity, all of these things I think ought to mark a Christian as they take in, read, understand, and share the news. Absolutely. David Clawson, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Always great to see you. Thank you, Tony.